Wow, I no longer have to wait five extra hours for my render to finish because I was too lazy to follow a tutorial on how to add motion blur into Eevee. Now with the most recent Blender update, I can just check this box and... Oh look, some footage I shot of my cats that I now forgot why I shot on them just repurposing it for a Blender video. Oh, cool. Honestly, guys, we are really pushing during these quarantine times to get the channel monetized so we can make that sweet $2 before some large company copyright claims the video for using a one second audio clip. So your time on this channel is greatly appreciated and thank you so much. Now back to the video. Yeah. It is here. With some minor flaws, the updated motion blur tool for Eevee will be released accompanying the new release of Blender 2.9, and it works really well. To give you an example of how all of these fancy settings work, I will give you an example of real life as real cameras have motion blur too, and you can't really turn it off. Now your phone camera doesn't use film, however, the best example I can give you of motion blur is an old camera that uses film, so let's use that. Think of film like a blank canvas, except instead of being able to paint on it with a brush, the amount of light that penetrates it alters the film in different locations based on how bright the light is on that film. Now, in order to properly shine the correct amount of light on the film or expose the film to the light, something called a shutter needs to be inside the camera. Now the shutter is like an eyelid for the camera, except it stays closed for the most part until a person wants to take a picture, of which then the shutter will open, exposing the film to the light of the world and forever cementing that embarrassing baby photo of you in history forever. Now overexposure can happen, which is when the shutter is open for too long, making the image too bright and blowing out all the detail in the photo. The same can happen for underexposure, except the photo tends to be dark. Now the motion blur occurs when either the camera moves or an object moves within the time that the shutter opens and closes. This gives the effect in the film of motion blur. The object appears blurry because the object reflects multiple varying light paths into the film that weren't there before because the light had just exposed the film. In the old days, cameras weren't that good, so people would have to stand still for minutes in order to get a good photo. This also means that slow motion videos have to be very well lit because the slow motion video shouldn't have much motion blur in it, and the film still needs to be properly exposed. Now Blender has different settings for exposure and motion blur, which is actually amazing because it would be really hard to do this in real life, so thanks to Blender for adding that in. So the shutter speed setting on the motion blur determines how long the imaginary shutter will be open for the motion blur, changing the length of the blur in the footage. But wait you ask, wasn't motion blur already in Eevee? Yes, I respond, but try saying excuse me before you barge in on a video like that. So let me explain. The motion blur option in Eevee before the new update was only accounting for the camera movement, meaning the object could whiz past the camera at a thousand miles an hour and Eevee wouldn't care about it at all. But if the camera turned a little too fast, all of a sudden the Eevee would be slapping all types of motion blur on your footage. But hey, my complaining is over because now motion blur for all is here, available for everyone with its newest release in Blender. Now as you have seen, there are a few different settings under the motion blur tab in Eevee, so let's check them out. The first is background separation, which I have found to have such little an impact on your render. How little you ask? Exactly this little. You can barely see the difference. Paired with reasonable amounts of motion blur, there is very little difference between 1 and 800,000 when it comes to background separation. Blender says background separation is to stop motion blur from bleeding into foreground objects. However, this, as you can see, has just infinitely little effect, so it won't really affect the quality of your renders unless somebody is taking a picture and zooming in times like a thousand on every single one of your renders. So I wouldn't really worry about this setting too much right now. Now let's move on to Max Blur. Max Blur specifically controls the length of your blur in Blender. So you can increase your shutter speed to something that's very slow, right? 8, 10 frames, but the Max Blur would still be 32 pixels by default because the Max Blur is 32 pixels. So if you really want a lot of blur, I would really recommend turning that Max Blur up all the way to something that you're satisfied with. Finally, we have steps, and just like a lot of other functions in Blender, steps works the same way. The more steps you have, the more time Blender uses to calculate the accuracy of the motion blur, therefore making the motion blur more accurate and better in a sense, and the less steps, the faster Blender runs and calculates the motion blur, however the quality will drop. If you don't need super precise accurate motion blur, if that's not the main part of your image or video, don't worry about it, you can do one, two, three steps, but if your video does have a lot of motion blur that is going to be something in the main focus and you are going to want to draw attention to that motion blur, I would definitely recommend turning the steps up a little. Once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. That was it for the video. Leave Instagram, ArtStation, all that good stuff down below. Hope everybody has a great day and thank you so much for watching.